Hey yo, welcome back. This is Ty Ty. I got my boy ATG in here today. Yup. He gonna break down how uh, he goes about background vocals, how he records them, how he mixes them. A lot of people struggle with this, and there's definitely methods to it to really where you can kind of maximize it and take it to a whole nother level and just bring a whole different uniqueness to even how your leads feel with how your backgrounds are layered. But let's go ahead and hop in, and we'll get it going. All right, so what I want to do is go over how I got these backgrounds. So um, the first one is the double. Now, I would like to treat my doubles differently than maybe an ad lib or a harmony. Um, the double that I like to use, typically I usually call it unity double. So what I want that to be is the closest thing I can get to a lead as possible. And it might not be on the whole entire verse. It might, it might be on certain sections. It might just be kind of to make things thicker and make things pop and more wider. Um, but it definitely is very important how you record it. And I've recorded it as close as I can to the lead just so when I mix it, it's going to fit nice and tight and underneath it. So I'm going to play the lead. It's just two tracks right here. It's the hook track and this double track right here. Um, right here. So I'm going to play it real quick and I'm going to let you listen to it. I be lying if I say you're the one I won't forget. Mm. Yeah. You know you've had a lot to drink And this is when you start to It fits, it thickens it up You can feel it, it's not too overpowering But at the same time, you can, if it's gone, you'll definitely know it's missing And the way I did that is very simple um, The main plugin is the Waves Doubler um, This is a, a Russell, a head engineer at the studio I work at uh, Raised the Bar, he kind of showed me this one time and then I, and then I stole it. The first thing I'm going to do, it loads up like this. I'm going to take the center out. The direct signal is out, so I'm just here in the sides. And what it does is copies it on the left and right and it detunes it and it gives it a little bit of delay to add it a little bit of thickness, but I take the center out and I just want what I just want it on the sides. The first thing I do, I'll put an EQ on it. This is just flat. It's not really doing anything. I sometimes will EQ this before I go into the doubler and compression. Sometimes I do it on the actual doubler. It just depends on what kind of I'm, what I'm feeling at the time. So I didn't really do anything on that pro cue. The first thing I did after that was compress it with the blue strap. Should I be lying if I say you're the one I won't forget? Mm. Yeah. You I know mean, you've had a lot. I'm compressing a lot and it's jumping out. And you can see my release is slow because mm. I don't want it to bring back up. I want it to kind of hold on to that. I wanted to hold on to the signal a little longer because I don't want it to come back out and pop out too much because I don't want the lead to be affected by it. Interesting. So, and I have it a, a faster release. Now, these 1176 are quick anyway, but I want to have it on the slowest setting. So, if you look at a gauge on a fuel gauge, like if you're in a like this is 110 and then this is zero. So, this is this is the fastest and then this is the slowest. Um, that's how I look at it as that. But I usually have my ratio higher, somewhere around 12. Typically, I have it on 12 to 1. 4 to 1 is where I put my lead. I put my background on like 12 to 1. I want it to be a lot more compressed. I don't want as many transients and signal getting through. So I have a higher ratio and a slow release because it holds onto it quicker and it, it kind of tucks it a lot better. It's really interesting to me with the, the attack and release because like a lot of times on leads, you're running a slower attack mm -hmm. and a faster release. So you're mm -hmm. just basically doing the opposite. Mm -hmm. And like, did it sound beautiful? He's right. The the slow attack, fast release kind of brings the vocal up front. And the opposite of that is kind of pulling it to the back. And that'd be the goal here. Sound good as hell. Um, actually, the doubler is the last thing I use um, on the actual chain. Um, like I said, direct, it, direct signal comes out. I do sometimes like to EQ it here. It just depends. A lot of times I'll roll off the lows. Should I be lying if I say you're the one I won't forget? Mm. You can instantly yeah. tell it, like, almost loosened it up. It loosened it up, sucked it in. Uh, also, the highs. I sometimes will get rid of the highs because I don't want too many highs on the double because that might interfere with the actual lead. So I'll loosen up. I'll, I'll roll off the highs as well, and I'll listen, let you listen to that. You're the one I won't forget. Mm. You can almost hear it's not as much. You can feel it more than you can hear it because the highs are gone and kind of the presence of where that vocal sits is gone. I wrote it off. It, to me, I can almost 
it almost sounds separate now. The way you had, the way you had it before, it sounded like very cohesive to the actual lead itself. It's an interesting way of going about it. I like that. We'll put the direct in and out, and you can tell what the direct does straight in the middle, and then the duplicate on the sides versus just out the middle and on the sides. Yeah, you know what I won't forget. Mm. So that's kind of in the middle, and then this is kind of on the side. You know what I won't forget. Mm. You can definitely tell it's in the middle when the direct's in, and then when it's not in, you can just only feel it on the sides. Yeah. And that's what I'm going for, because the middle is the lead. I'm not trying to have anything touch that. Um, after that, simply, probably just some reverb, something to kind of give it some space and more depth. The way I have it routed is important, too. I have the leads going to a lead aux. And all my backgrounds, or anything that isn't a lead, goes to a background vocals aux. They do not go to the same thing. They, they all hit the all vocals aux at some point. So every this doubler is going to a background vocals aux, which I have pretty close. It's pretty much what ha what's the lead, what the lead's got. So I want them to sound similar. I don't want them to sound like the recorder in two different places. So the vocal chain I have on my background vocals, I go through a pro Q. Uh, really just an EQ, typically a roll off, some lows, some highs. Um, like I said, I don't want that too many highs in the background because it's going to clash with the lead. And the EQ P1A, everybody loves it. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. Aye. All I'm doing here <laughs> is boosting at 12K. That's kind of where the, the presence and a lot of the clarity comes from. I sometimes will attenuate if I boost at 10. I might attenuate at 10. If right here I'm boosting at 12. I still might attenuate at 10 just because if you boost and attenuate in the same frequency, it, it, it changes kind of the curve on how it sounds. And it's kind of, it can be definitely uh, pleasurable if you are looking for that. But that's literally it on this one. Um, no more, no less. This one right here, the Millennia EQ, I love the way this sounds. It's just a preset that I tweaked. So the preset is the male vocal tube. And I think I've tweaked it down to be... I tweak some of the highs, I roll off some less, I don't want more of the highs, so I might boost a lot less. And then I'm boosting a lot of the chest, a little, a lot of low, lower, mid, lower frequencies at 100. I'm boosting that, because I just want a lot more body, a lot less top end. The way that sounds, by itself, is impeccable. Then I got this LA-2A, um, popular on vocals, everybody loves it. It's a medium, it's, it's a variable, so it just depends on how hot the signal is coming in will determine its own attack or release, but you really can't change it. So a lot of it is just body and thickness. You're the one I won't forget. Mm. And sometimes it's just for tone. You put an LA-2A on and something, and you can hear it sound immediately without it even compressing. Oh, it'll change it. So it'll change it without you even doing anything. That's probably what I got it on there for. But every background vocal goes to this aux. So this next one is fresh air. I just got some mid-air going. Sometimes I might back this off depending on what I've got going on, how many I got left. I got a lot more than I don't want as much mid air going into the signal as I would maybe just that the sheen in the high air. So typically I might turn this up, I might turn this down depending on what I've got. And then I'll try to trim it back down to kind of get it to make it balance right. This next one is the mag EQ. Pretty simple. I use the mag for the airband. That's what everybody uses it for. Regardless of what they say, they use it for the airband only because it's very famous. It sounds really good. I got it boosting 4 dB at 20K. Sometimes I'll use 40, 40K. It just adds that air, that, that top end air that you really can't get anywhere else. I sometimes will boost right here. I got it boosted at 1 dB at 2.5K. That's kind of that presence. And sometimes you can get too much of that. So sometimes I might boost it and sometimes I might dial it back and kind of take some out if I'm getting too much. Next is another EQ. It's my favorite thing to do. EQing um, right here. I'm not really doing too much. The only thing I'm doing is boosting at 3, 3K, about 3.5 three dB, 3K, and I'm boosting 200, about 2.5 dB. Um, the body, the chest, 200. A lot of times, that's kind of where that, that sound comes from. I don't really want too many things else going on. After that, I have an L2. The L2 is just giving me a little bit more oomph and a little bit more gain, probably just dropping down the uh, threshold at just two. That's all it's doing. It's giving me some more volume. And then to top it off with a DS or to kind of tame some of them S's, them S frequencies. Eh, you're the one I won't forget. Mm, eh. Anything that gets too, too sibilant, I put the DS on it and it should tame it off. Um, I honestly still might go wide. The split band only 
uh, it only really wants to take off the frequencies when it gets past that certain point at that specific spot. Wide means the whole vocal will go down when it's past that threshold. Basically, I, I look at it as it's better for the wide if I use the background vocal because nothing will get too overbearing and too sibilant and get caught in front of the lead. So a lot of times I'll use the wide setting on the DS or on the backgrounds because the whole vocal will duck mm -hmm. instead of just that sibilant frequency. After that, whether it be doubles, ad libs a lot of the times I very it differs just varies depending on what I want sometimes I want it to sound dirty and filtered sometimes I want it to sound clean but not necessarily a lead I want it to be like a lead but just maybe off to the right or left a little bit and that is something that I feel like can vary depending on what I want but a lot of times I'm a very fan on automation and the reason why is because automation helps you put things where they need to be and there's no question about where it is when you automate and you pan things everything is where it needs to be and there's no way to mess it up now does it take time it does take a little bit of time but is it worth it 100 percent, because nothing is out of place everything fits where it needs to be whether it be to the left to the right up or down there's everything has a pocket and i creating my own pockets on everything i do so just this section right here with this ad lib 4 track right here let's just listen to that and see what we got <laughs> What I did there was, it was the same thing three times, but all I did was turn it down as I did it three times, and I panned it further away every single time I did it. So I'm actually gonna solo that part. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Mm. That's it. It's almost like a delay, but I did it on my own. And it was creatively that way, but I, I put everything where I needed to be, I fit it where I wanted it to be at, and I automated it every time because it's never going to necessarily be where you want it to be. And you could do it on three different tracks, but it, you know, it's more CPU and you know. And the, simply, all I have is a, a roll off on the EQ, a little bit of highs, a little bit of lows. Here I'm kind of boosting it five, kind of give it a little more oomph. Um, and that's literally all I have there. This one, I do have this um, 1176. I think I went with this one because I didn't want it to be necessarily too bright on this one um a lot of it adds a lot of thickness when you have the blue stripe but this one i just wanted to kind of be plainer still got the fast attack and the slow release still to tuck it and then to get a little bit of dirty get a little bit of grit i used decapitator the drives at two and a half um i wanted it a little bit darker i didn't want it to be that bright so i used the just shaping the tone how i wanted to sound in my head Filtering, EQing, compressing, what panning. You, what you got going on with that lexicon? These are the three things that we we like to do. The lexicon, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty beast. Just giving me some atmosphere. I literally have it on a preset atmosphere, and it it can get too much. It definitely can get too much, especially when you have a lot of decay. It's it can get but the way it sounds when used properly, it sounds great. All it is is just atmosphere setting, and you can hear it. Yeah, I like it. And all it is is just kind of giving that atmospheric vibe. It's sizzly. And it's sizzly, and all it is is just a preset that I tweaked. I think I probably only probably turned down the uh, decay a little bit. Other than that, I mean, it, it kind of fit where I want it to be at. I want it to be kind of atmospheric. And I feel like the song's kind of majestic to me. It's very majestic, very melodic. So these things kind of, the settings and the presets that I'm using go hand in hand with the overall feel and fit of the record. Same thing with the, with the doubles. Everything is recorded properly. And the, ch the chain that I talked about today, earlier, it still fits. The only thing you might change, like I said, I might automate something if this needs to be louder. Everywhere you go, you gonna see my name. I might automate it up or down if I need to, to change the, um, to change it. That's it. It's the only thing I would do. But if I do that, everything is gonna have its own pocket. 
Everything's going to fit where it needs to fit, and there's nothing, nothing's going to be out of place. And if it is, I'll manually fix it. I like to have control over something that has to be perfect. Because if I have control over everything, there's nothing that's going to be out of place. Everything will fit how I want it to fit. And for the most part, everything is, it's not really too crazy. Just the, just kind of the ad lib track. A lot of these things are muted or are, they're automated, whether it be volume and panning. Other than that, as you can tell, everything is kind of just those things that I've talked about already. The only thing else is sometimes when I have like a background vocal, a lot of times I will use uh, a delay throw on certain aspects and I'll do this on the lead as well. The only other thing that I've used differently is a delay throw in certain aspects of this, this record, especially on the backgrounds, because that is when I'm hearing something and I want it to say, and then I want it to keep repeating. And that's all I do. Instead of putting something on the entire thing, kind of gets kind of muddy, kind of clouded, I use a throw. All, I, I, all it really is is just a send, which is a quarter note send. That's all it is. And I have it over here on the ad lib track. And then when I want it to come out, I just automate the level up. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Just kind of pops out. The come get it. That's all I want. That's all I want. I just want it to pop out. So basically everything that I, I show and everything I show today is interchangeable. Sometimes I might not every I might not always automate everything. I might need to automate everything. Sometimes it just depends on what I'm trying to go for in the record. How how many times do I want to do I want to keep automating everything? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I want this part to have one section to have something else that the rest don't. I'll put that on a new track, copy it over, and then just add that one thing on there. There really is no right or wrong way to do it. A lot of people do it different ways based on what they're going for, but I feel like the way you record it is very important, and that's the start. Recording it properly and mixing it how I mixed it, I think everything kind of comes together once you do everything properly. But yo, y'all better be thankful for that valuable information. He broke it down. You know, listen to that, and I've listened to a lot of his mixes. This is the first time I've ever really, like, seen the way he goes about it. It's a lot simpler than I would have assumed, mm -hmm. but it's so powerful. So, yeah, try that on your own tracks, and we're going to catch you next time. Peace.